just as good as everybody else. You have equal rights and you have a purpose in this world. As an educator, I learned way back that it's something that we have to understand, appreciate, and use in a way that it benefits all of us. Uh, just based on my own personal experience, um, I went to Winslow Public Schools. So having gone to a BIA dormitory on the nation at Delcon near about 30 miles north of Winslow, it only went up to the fourth grade. So fifth grade, I had to be sent to another school and I ended up at Winslow. And I stayed at the BIA dormitory and attended the local public schools. And that was quite an experience. That was the first time I saw students of different color. I saw a black student in my classroom for the first time. And that really caught my attention. Uh, and then I looked around and there was Orientals. There was uh, Mexicans. And there were a Jew guy sitting across. Well, I didn't know what a Jew was at the time, but later I learned. So that was my early experience. And I come to find out that these people um, are just like me. And our Diné ways, I guess, we put everyone on an equal footing based on very uh, four basic very principle. Every human being in this world needs air. Every human being needs water. Every human being needs fire, light. And every human being needs Earth, no sun, because no sun is what nourishes a plant and food and all other things that we that we enjoy in life. So knowing that from the beginning of time, the creator made uh, people in different parts of the world. And so the, the Mexicans and the Latinos were put in the southern portion of Arizona, further down into Mexico. And um, I didn't know the difference between uh, Mexican or Spanish until later on. And then all of a sudden I started hearing Latino. All of a sudden along the ways another his word Hispanic came about. And so I guess that's all tied into uh, what we believe as as having indigenous ties to land. So land and language are key. And the Mexican and Latino population have a rich culture, beautiful people. If you listen to their music, their dance, their way of life, the food, it is so uh, wonderful. I have had the opportunity to travel the world and I always pay attention to people wherever I end up at. And uh, here in America, we have people that that, that have uh, come from down south. The native people have very close ties with the Hispanic population. Some of our native people in Arizona, for instance, Tona Autum, their reservation extends into Mexico. And I uh, haven't spent some time with uh, folks down there in the education field. Uh, they 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 cross the border, and many of them speak Spanish very fluently, even though they're part of the Tona Otum population. So we have that kind of exchange from way back in time, and our people depended on one another for survival for many thousands of years. Granted, at the same time, they became hostile at time because of survival, food and territory. All of that came into play. But I think along the ways we begin to see that uh, that they're, they're, these people are 
no different than 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 we are. And so I think the Hispanic uh, Heritage Month uh, for children, I think, is very important. We got to educate them the best we can about how these people are a part of this world. They're not aliens. They didn't come from just out there. They have roots here. They have ties. They have a right to be on this earth just like everybody else. And so I'm glad that uh, Congress took it upon themselves to uh, put forth um, some policies that recognize the, the Hispanic uh, Heritage Month from September, September 15th to October 15th. People talking about it, paying attention to what these folks have contributed to society and to the world. I mean, they stand out. Uh, I was just looking at something earlier that in the military, in the military, the Hispanic population has has been given the most amount of um, the Congressional Medal of Honor. I mean, that stands out. These people have gotten involved in all of the uh, branches of military. Um, in the, in the United States Army, for instance, as of the 2010 census, roughly 15% of all uh, service people in the Army were, were Hispanic heritage. So they have pride. They have a wonderful way of life. And I think in schools, we see it all the time. I see, I see children playing. When they first come to school, I mean, many these children don't don't know. Uh, they don't pay attention to color. They don't pay attention to their language. They immediately get excited about just seeing one another. They immediately want to touch each other. They want to play with each other. They want to laugh with one another and socialize. By golly, it's so enlightening, so beautiful to see young children at an early age having this strong desire to just connect naturally and take that individual uh, for what they are. You know, but it's, it's very sad as they get older because of various forces, external forces, media, government control, politics, these children begin to get isolated and they begin to think that their color is better than the other. And in the long run, some of them take it for granted that maybe a certain group or even they themselves might be more inferior, bigger than, than the other. And uh, where racism comes in, where discrimination comes in. And just in Northern Arizona, I mean, way back in time, uh, the indigenous people in northern Arizona were the Diné people, the Hopi people, the Wallapai, the, uh, the Paiute, and Havasupai. These people dominated this region. And the Europeans came around. And uh, the, the, the Hispanic population began to uh, migrate and now we have a melting pot right here in Flagstaff, Arizona. And every time you drive down the street, you always look, always pay attention to uh, who's all there. It seemed like the, the, the colors beginning to get lighter and lighter as I observe. Uh, way back in time, it was more and more the, the brown people, people uh, colored people that dominated the area. And the Mexicans, Latinos were part of that big population. So it's, uh, it's something that is uh, very important for these young children to know. In spite, of, in spite of the trials and tribulations, the challenges that we've gone through as a people, somehow we got to learn how to live together, learn how to appreciate and love one another. And I think the best, the best uh, platform for all of that is education. The more we get to these children early on, about diversity, about multiculturalism, about ethnicity. Uh, they will begin to appreciate 
um, themselves and, and 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 take others in with them. So I really believe that uh, there's 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 room for everybody. There's room for everybody, and it's really sad. Within the last several months, we've seen and heard a lot of hostility all across America because of people getting hurt, and you see it in the news every day. And sometimes it's frightening for children and them looking at the news and saying that uh, uh, leaders making a harsh statement that a certain group is the only one that, 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 that stands out and all other people are less equal. Um, and that, that is sad. It was never that way for, for, for centuries, for thousands of years. People help one another and uh, really took care of each other. So I, I had a chance to go to San Antonio many years ago. I didn't know much about the Spanish-American War. In high school, I, I know there was a whole chapter on it, but I learned that if we had lost the, 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 the battle right there at Alamo, at the Alamo, um, Arizona, uh, Nevada, California, parts of New Mexico would have all been under Mexican control. This happened in 1860, just 160 years ago. And my thought as I left was just uh, overwhelming. I said, God, what if? What if David Crockett, uh, White Europe, and the other courageous people lost that battle? The, 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 the boundaries would have been drawn and we would all been under the Mexican government. I don't know if it would have taken another world war to regain all of that, but we came that close. And so just walking around San Antonio with all the rich Mexican Spanish culture um, and everything else, boy, I was so proud to just be there with brown skin and knowing that these are my relatives, these are people that that I that I understand, these are people that are a part of me. Um, so I think that that just there's a lot of history, a lot of history about how we all came about. And so it's really important for young children to know where they came from and how they're connected and how they have roots and foundation. And it's very sad that a lot of people don't seem to know. It seems like they just float here and there. Uh, it's not unusual to hear a person with white collar to say, hey, I was born in Texas, but I live in uh, Oklahoma. And I ha I'm going to New York. I have relatives over there. Then I'm, I'm going to go to California. Um, they, think they can't really pinpoint where they're coming from, where their roots are. But at me as the Diné, probably for the Hispanic too. When I think of home, okay, when I think of home, I don't think of Flagstaff. Flagstaff is where I live, okay, for the past four to five years. I've lived here. I have a home here. But when I think of home, that my mind goes to my ancestral home which is north of Winslow, 25 miles north of Winslow. That's a place called Standing Horse. That's where my grandmas, my grandpas, all my ancestors, that's where they live when I came around. And so that connection to that part of the world, uh, you, see, you, you, see, you, you feel is it's very comforting, says that when I go there, it seems like I'm home. This is where I fit in. Um, this is this is where I belong. Okay. Not not too many people will probably have that kind of feeling, but I bet you uh, the Mexican students, uh, a Spanish student, based on their the stories that they've heard from their grandparents, and all, they have that kind of connection all the way into Mexico, all the way into South America, and and different parts of the world. And so, it's. Uh, it's something very interesting and uh, there's a lot of history um, from the beginning of time as to how we all cross paths. And so today we live in this part of the world called America. 
We live in a state called Arizona and a county called Coconino and a city called Flagstaff. And so I would say that uh, all of these historical incidents just didn't happen for, for, for any, as probably the creator's way. It was the creator's way of how we all blend together. At, at times we, we fell off balance. Sometimes we hurt each other. But I think the underlying factor is that through through education, um, there's room for uh, I words I read something down. Through education, there's exposure and there's compassion and such a word as empathy. I think that's that's what uh, we all need to strive to understand as best we can. So anyway, that's my thoughts on the Hispanic appreciation. Of my